Hey guys, it's Roof Day, and today I'm gonna to show you how to frame in a roof so you can get a traditional peak with a ridge beam so that you can make your shed look like your home. All right guys, so there's basically three kinds of roofs out there. One, one is a single slope, and if you were following along, we did a couple of different sheds with different kinds of single slope. We did one that just had a waterproofing membrane on it. Did another one with a metal roof. Today we're gonna to do a ridge beam. The third kind is truss, and that is a prefabricated roofing system that you just set on top. Now, we're gonna do the ridge beam because it's really convenient and it gives you a lot of flexibility, right? Because you can change the position of the ridge, move it forward or backwards, and have two different sizes slope if you want. Today we're gonna to try to go right down the middle. And in order to do that, oh, we're gonna to measure to five feet. Remember, this shed is 10 by 16. So we wanna just double check our side, here we go. We are just a hair off with this double plate. No big deal. This is now my center line, okay? Now the basic concept of a ridge, guys, is we're gonna have a piece of wood up here, all right? And then we have wood coming from each side, going all the way to the other side of the, the other side of the shed. But what we've gotta do is we gotta find out what this slope, this angle is gonna be, all right? We don't know what the angle is gonna be yet. So first thing we're gonna do is identify the maximum height that this thing can be. In order to make sure I don't run into compliance issues with the building inspector, gotta make sure that the top of my roof is 24 or less, okay? So I'm gonna have a two by six, I'm gonna have plywood, it's gonna peak. So I wanna make sure that I got five eighths plus another inch. So I'm gonna just account for two inches of extra buildup on here just to make sure that I'm gonna be okay. Two by six is five and a half inches. Minus two, it's three and a half. 24, seven and a half from 24. All right, so if that's my height, I need two inches for all the buildup. And then one, two, three, four, five and a half inches, there's the bottom. So now I've got that marked. We're gonna count that as 16 and a half inches. We're gonna put a post here on the other side of the other, the other end. At 16 and a half inches. This sounds like a lot of work, but it's actually pretty straightforward. We're going to temporarily install this block right here. Set our ridge beam on. All right. All right. Okay, there we are. Phew. Now I'm going to go set up the same thing at the other end and then we can lift the ridge beam in place and throw a screw or two through the outside, temporarily holding it in place, get rid of the brace, and we can start getting our measurements. So we're using the same dimension lumber. I just measured 21 inches to the top, so it's very similar to the other side. I've got my center mark here, I got my center mark here, and that is my flush. And we're gonna throw a screw in that. And good. Oh, hang on, there we go. All right, now we're gonna throw a level on it. Matt can screw down the bottom. While he's doing that, I'm gonna mark the same height, my 16 and a half line. That's where my two by six rim comes. So now I got to struggle every, every step of the way. Okay, I'm gonna get that on the line. We're using screws for all of these stages because screws can be adjusted. Really important that we get this as perfectly level as possible. So we're gonna get the rim in place, get up here with the level, try to see we need to make any adjustments. Now we need that 16 foot board. Yeah. See if there's a crown on it too, Matt, if you can. Now guys, if you're not familiar with the crown, all these pieces of lumber that are straight usually have a bit of a bow to them. So you wanna put the bow at the top it's a lot easier to manipulate flattening out a bow than it is to try to push up on a ball. You know what I mean? I mean, it's pretty. Yeah, I, yeah. It was pretty, pretty good, good the first board. day, but we've been delayed a week because of rain. So I don't like building roofing in the rain. Thank you. There you go. Hey. And I'll go to the other end. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Okay. Here's my center line. 
lumber is one and a half inches, so that's three quarters on each side. So I need my outside line. And because I'm gonna be on the wrong side of that beam, I wanna mark it over here as well. Okay, here we go. Now we know exactly where this is supposed to land. All right? All right, there we go. So I'm in position. Okay, just pull it out a little bit and make it, make it fit. Because we use the braces on the uh, bottom, it makes it nice and compressed. Okay, hold it. Move your hand so I can see my mark. Yeah, perfect. Throw a screw from the outside and the top and the bottom so it won't flip over on us. Okay, there you go. Now you gotta grab the level, throw it up here, and let's, uh, let's see if this sucker needs to be adjusted. Very important when you're using a level that your eyes are right in front of it. You're not looking up or down or from the side. All right. Okay, so we are a hair off. All right, so we both have the same measurement, but we're a little out on the level. Part of that might be a slight curve in the wood, okay? The thing here is, if I make the ridge perfect, and there's different heights from the plate, then every one of my rafters is going to be at a different depth off the wall. So I would rather be a hair out on level than start adjusting it to be perfect to make the whole roof kind of go like this to flat at the end, okay? So be careful with that. <laughs> Remember, when you're building, um, start with level, and it makes everything a lot easier. But apparently, our platform is just a little bit out of, out of level here. Not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. I mean, not who's the end of the world. It's a half inch level over 16 feet on a on yeah. A big and, shed. and the other thing is, is if I go to the other side with that level, yep. it might say exactly the same thing only the other direction because there could be a crown. Right. All right. Now um, we're going to get a couple screws in the end over here to keep it from moving around, and then we'll take that blocking off and we'll get our measurement, and then we got to cut all of our all of our uh, rafters. Cool. Yeah. Am I come over coming over there? Yeah, throw the screws in from the other side. Okay. So we're taking this block off, cutting it down here now, throwing that in to help support the weight, okay? One screw carries 80 pounds. That's plenty for now. It's just temporary bracing. And actually gonna be in my way. Here. What was I thinking? There we go. That's better. Now, we're gonna show you how to do this. Take that two by four many. Yep. So here's the plan. We're gonna set it on the far side on our double plate. We're gonna bring it over here to about the height that it's gonna end up. Okay, right here. Right. Hold that there. Can you hold that there? Yep. Now, we're just gonna set a piece of wood flush here, draw that line. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. This is the line that we translated, okay? And the saw operates like this. You've got your gauge here. This is your block, all right? And this is your release mechanism. So what we're gonna do is line this up. Now I'm eyeballing it, the one eye here, okay? I wanna see this black line here touching my edge of my saw and this black line touching the edge of the saw here. And when I get that lined up just the way I want it, I'm gonna lock it in. We're gonna do a test cut. We're gonna see how close we are. Okay, and that's how I can tell. Now, I know I'm wider here than here, all right? So we're gonna take the lock off. We're gonna go just another, another quarter degree here. Lock it again. Cut a little closer. Okay, still not there. Let's go to another degree. Yeah, now I don't know about you, but I'm loving that. Now the purpose of the line is not where I'm cutting. Remember, I've only got to go about six and a half feet maybe, okay? So the purpose of this line is to establish the, the cut line. Now we know we're cutting 18 degrees all day long, okay? I'm even gonna write that over here, because that's my cut. For the top of all my rafters, at the bottom of all my rafters where my tail is, my extension, all of my cuts are gonna be at 18 degrees. So that's why this is gonna be locked here. I'm even gonna put a little mark, okay? Now, we're just gonna cut one time through.
Now I'm gonna go take this back up, all right? We're gonna set it in place, put it up against the rim, and then we're gonna mark where the overhang is to the perfect dimension for my design. We're gonna explain our choices on the design in a second. All right, so what we're doing here is this. Here's our edge of our building, okay? We gotta know our end from our beginning, so we gotta think about our assembly. Now, I'm gonna be wrapping this in Tyvek, which has a one millimeter thickness. <laughs> Maybe two, all right? But then we're also gonna be adding, our finish is clad is gonna be vinyl side. And generally speaking, the J trim that goes on vinyl siding, this width here is going to be about one inch. Now, because we're gonna have an outside corner, we need to have at least an inch of here. And if I cut that with that same 18 degrees, okay, then I can add a fascia board across the front. So if I can put a one by five on there, then I, my fascia will actually hang below here. My siding will come up underneath it and I don't have to do any soffit work. Remember, the way we're building this roof is not to let fresh air in, so we don't need soffits. So you have an aesthetic choice. If you want to put in soffit, you can cut it way down here and then you can bring a piece of wood back and then you can add soffit. But if you like to be cheap and get maintenance free, then what we're gonna do is have this on vinyl. Our fascia board will be PVC. We won't ever have to do any painting. So here's my mark. That is plenty. Go one inch over. Yeah. So I'm gonna cut my 18 degrees off this point and then I'm going to create a template. We're gonna get the length of that and then we're gonna cut all of our rafters at once so we can install the entire building. All right, now because I measured my angle on the inside of the roof and now I'm on the outside of the roof, my angle's in the other direction. But the saw has the mirror image of your angle. So take this over, set it to 18. There we go. Bring my blade down, make contact right at this point. Okay, and I have to use this on nice and slow because we're using a lighter gauge wire for the extension power. So she's only running on 30%. <laughs> and the wood is wet because it's been raining and sitting out here for a couple weeks. Now I'm gonna go up and confirm this on all four corners, okay? And what I'm looking for is when I put it up there, I'm gonna mark where it meets the top of the double. And then we're gonna check all four to make sure that this is gonna work out. That'll confirm that the rim is exactly down the middle and that all of our measurements are good, then I could just have Matt stand over here and cut this 32 times. Oh, here we go. Matt, can you hold that flesh there? All right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this measurement. Now this becomes the nailing or screwing surface of my, my facade. You see how it hangs down? I got room for my siding underneath here with no more additional help. I'm gonna just go like this, okay? Mark that tip. I'm gonna try it on all four corners and make sure that it's in the same position. I'm also gonna do it, this line here, so we can have a visual. All right. So I hold it flush up to the top here. The line is hidden right at the edge of that, of the uh, double plate, it's perfect. All right. All right, we're just gonna come out here, make that flush at the top. I'm not taking into account the fact that our double plate, we have sheathing on the backside, right? So I'm gonna have to make this board an extra half an inch longer on the backside to cover past the sheathing. We were measuring off the top of our double plate, this point right here, but our sheathing is here. That's gonna extend my corner on my vinyl half inch back. So this is a perfect dimension for the front, but on the backside, we're gonna have to make them all another half inch longer to compensate for the thickness of that sheathing. All right, so that works here. Try that one on that front there. Make sure that the rim is in the right place because we're not just confirming that the um, rafters are good, we're confirming the position of this, of this as well. Yeah, there you go. How's that look? Perfect. All right, now it's production time. So we're gonna cut a bunch of those, mark out the joists for the rafter location and the plates, okay? So here's my 16. 
All right, and I'm gonna put an X on it. The red square is the next 16. The X is just what side the rafter goes on. Little red square there, that's the 48. There we go. Oh! oh. <laughs> just about took my own head off here. All right, let's just see if we can uh, get down and get this bad boy. All right. All right, let's do that again. <laughs> it's hilarious. All right, here we go, red square. Okay. I'm gonna keep tension on it so it doesn't pop off. I'm on a wheeled cart here so I can go all the way down. One run. This one here. It's uh, specifically at eight feet, okay? So this one, I'm gonna mark it in center. And I'll show you why when we go to put the skin on, the plywood want to meet in the middle of that rafter, okay? There we are. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And of course, the one in the end. There we go. My X is on here. What this is gonna do, it's gonna allow you to use one full sheet of goods here, which is eight feet long, and then another full sheet of goods to put the roof on. Uh, it's just a shed. We're making it quick and sorry, simple here. We're trying to keep the process simple for you so you can think like you're building a box with a couple extra supports. And then you're adding another box at the other end with a couple supports. All right, so we're gonna pop in a bunch of rafters here now. We're gonna go through a system, but we're gonna lay out, first of all, if you're working alone, how to do it, the right and the wrong way. And then we'll show you if it's a two-person operation, uh, it changes everything. First of all, Matt, why don't you just uh, demonstrate throwing the first one on by yourself, okay? Using the nail gun. Okay, the idea here, guys, is you wanna get a nail coming in here and here, okay? So you're coming down about an inch and a quarter and then another inch and a quarter. So that the contact is coming through the bulk of the wood. If you start too high on the other side, the nail will be sticking out on this side and that would be bad. Now, that's if you're holding it right. Show them what happens if you're not holding it right with the nail gun, okay? If you don't have a good squeeze, you'll get gappage, all right? So then what you gotta do to fix that is use a screw. Oh, it's got the clip on, nice belt you got there. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's pretty handy. Yeah. All right. So if you go in one nail in weak, and what kind of screw are you using there? It's a three inch... Uh, Decking screw? Okay, those are lousy for shear strength. So use that in the middle and then add another nail. You can't use deck screws for structural lumber. Okay. They have really weak structural strength, okay? And in our climate, especially here with the roof, because it's carrying the live load, it's also carrying snow load. You wanna use metal fasteners. So you can hit that again. All right, now, we're gonna just leave the rafters floating for now, except for where we'll have the brackets. Consider a, you know, the first fastener being the screw gun, because then you can confirm you have the location, you're happy about everything. Using the screw gun, it gives you a nice pull and it holds it in place while you're driving your nails, okay? That gives you flexibility too, because then if you have made a mistake or something slipped while you're tying it together, you can just back it out and do it again. All right. So am I doing two nails too? Yes. Two nails. Okay. Remember when we talked about, we've got a, um, uh, a determined inch and a quarter overhang here, okay? Nice, that's perfect. And what I can do is as I'm coming along, I can measure my inch and a quarter every time before I attach my rafters. Now, in the oh, wrong screw bit here. What I'm gonna do here is I'm using hurricane ties. I've measured across where the location of the rafters go the same as the top. And I can use hurricane ties to tie this all together. Now, 
you got questions about the system, throw it in the comments, okay? I know it's not traditional, but it's just a shed. So as long as we remind ourselves, it's just a shed. It's just a shed, you know? It'll be okay. All right, let's get some more of these going. So there's half the roof. Now I'm gonna go and dip all of the, uh... <sighs> brain's not working. I'm gonna go cut the rafters for the other side now so we can uh, get our support all sorted out. Then we gotta put in a few cross pieces. We gotta do all our blocking. <sighs> and then we're gonna have a roof that's totally supported because this kind of a roof, when it's sitting like this against the ridge, really the, there's an outward force right here at the bottom. So if this is tied to the wall, it won't disengage but it could still open up, okay? This is your building, it can still open up like that. So that's why we've gotta get these cross ties in so that we've got some stability to make sure that that doesn't happen under extreme snow load. And if we're both walking around up there putting on the sheet goods, we don't wanna collapse our roof. <laughs> so when I'm doing this, <laughs> I'm a little different. I don't like to shoot nails into knots. So I'm checking, inspecting the first six inches of my board here. Okay, I wanna make sure that I don't have Anything there that's going to be a problem once I'm up there with a the nail gun. If you cut this off without looking, and let's say I cut it right here, there's my knot. I'm going to throw my first nail in. The nail's going to hit that. It's going to bounce it open, and they're not going to be able to even use a screw to drive it closed, right? You're going to have to pull out that nail. You're going to have to pre-drill a hole, throw in a screw. Such a pain in the butt. So pay attention, right? I'm good here. I know my measurement's 63 and 3 quarters. That's down here. Checking this wood for the same thing as well. All right, don't want to be playing with knots. If you got one, cut it away. Make sure you're taking the piece of the board that works best for you. That's really the whole secret. Listen to your saw when it's cutting. Uh, especially right now, I'm on a smaller gauge wire bringing the power to it. If it's working too hard, the wood could be too wet, you could be going through a knot. If you hear it screaming, slow down, be relaxed, it's not a race, all right? I let the blade do the work. But if it starts to scream, it means you're trying to push too hard. You're gonna wreck your motor. Good 12 inch compound miter saw. Should last you your entire career. Now, we got weather coming. Here we go. We're gonna get a couple of these installed here real quick. What I'm doing is I'm putting these in the same location as these, okay, on the other side. And because I've got a three and a quarter inch nail, I'm actually gonna be, only the mirror image, driving my nails right next to this, but on an angle, so it goes through the rim and then picks up the middle of this piece of wood. I'll show you what that looks like here. So I'm working by side here, I've got my mark, I'm going flush off the top, grab my nailer, I'm gonna drive my nail here, put on an angle, so it'll cross through and then into the rafter on the other side in the middle. Keeping my hands clear. There we go. Solid as a rock. Now, because the weather's coming, I wanna get two of these installed, screw down the other side, that'll kinda hold this together in the wind. It looks like I got about 20, 25 minutes before the storm hits, so I gotta pack up all my gear and all my tools again, and uh, we'll try again another day to finish this off. Ah, 
Yeah, all right, guys. That's enough for me today, huh? <laughs> I'm loving it. Well, here we are. Well, it's been a couple of days. We've been through a massive rainstorm. Uh, had some really decent flooding in town. Um, by the way, if you're watching these videos and you know somebody who's gone through flooding or you're going through flooding yourself, I'm gonna put a link in the video description here. We did a series uh, in my basement a couple years ago. I tore it apart and rebuilt it to show you what it looks like when you have a flood and then what the restoration process is. In most cases, you guys, you can cash in on the insurance company at 90 cents on the dollar from the claim and you can do it yourself and even make a few bucks. Uh, it'll help buy some more furniture, put back in there later. Anyway, let's just go through a couple more of these framing details that are part of the roof. One of them is this, this piece right here. This is a 10 foot two by four. It goes right from the face of this wall to the other side. We're tying it all together in a triangle pattern to the, no. There we go. Now the rafter and this brace are tied together. It becomes a truss, okay? And what that is, is it's this ability, no matter how much weight you put down on the top, it can't bend the building out because this, okay, holds it together. So now you've got one complete triangle strong structure and that's gonna be all tied together. Uh, I'm gonna get Matt to come up here and do the rest of the blocking. We wanna have no air coming in here except through the vent that we're gonna install. All right, woo. Once we get that done, We've got to do the gable ends. We've got to get our sheathing on. And we're going to do the roofing, hopefully by the end of today, because the weather forecast is very, very spotty this year. And I don't like getting my tools soaking wet if I can avoid it. We're blocking. Uh, basically, once we have our roof on, there's going to be a hole going up here. And we don't want rodents and stuff getting into the building, into the structure. Right. So we're simply going to put blocks in between each uh, each trust so that once our plywood is on, there's no possible way that the things can get in. Um, Be free, baby. Yep. What I was doing uh, yesterday, I guess, was uh, putting three nails along the front side and then toenailing on other end. Jeff pointed out that this is not a structural portion of the structure, <laughs> so uh, that's useless and it's a waste of nails. Uh, but I'm going to do it anyway just because I guess uh, <laughs> now you're in rhythm. That's how I was doing it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna get roasted by all the framers, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start by toenailing it because I want it to be flush with our top plates here. So just gonna toenail the thing. Bang. And bang. And then one, two, three. So I uh, hammer in the uh, nails after just for, I guess, continuity purposes. And uh, there you go, there's a block. Um, if I did it wrong, let me know. If I can do it better, let me know. <laughs> here you go, bud. Thanks, man. Oh, Jesus, okay. So now we're gonna do this one here. It's a little tight. Just make sure it's flush on the front end. And then we toenail. Last step before we can remove our temporary bracing is we have to do the blocking on the gable end. Uh, it's as simple as measuring from the top down so that our block transfers load directly from the rafter to the stud, okay? Now, these are off cuts, so the angle's already perfect for the roof. <laughs> and it doesn't really matter how perfect this is. It's just a nailing surface for our siding leader. And as long as I'm within a few inches of the stud, I'm fine. There you go. Toenail, toenail, off we go.
Yeah. So we, we got like a nail or a screw right there. Yeah. Two of them in eight. Oh, what a great drill, dude. I'm glad you're liking your new toys. All right. Anything here? Okay. And then, oh, <laughs> 10 birds. Okay, that's out of the way. It's a fresh air intake vent. This is passive. There's no motor, there's no nothing. But because the wind comes from across that field almost every day, this is a great way to get air circulation in the shed. Okay? So, eventually we'll be putting it right here. All right? The challenge is, I need to actually attach it to something. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna add some blocking so I've got a nailing surface, okay? All right. You're gonna hand it to me sideways, right? Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> so, groove is uh, your right side? Okay, you wanna go groove down, okay? Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, I got it. All right. We can rotate it now on the ladders, pins. Yeah. Okay, so there's not much friction. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's it. Keep going. Yeah, I got it. And my ladder actually will keep it from sliding out of position. All right. Okay. It's as close as you're going to get for now because my ladder's in the way. There we go. Ah, very important here that we square off this roof right off the very beginning. Yeah. Okay? All right, so what I'm looking for is the bottom of this sheathing is just a, just a hair more than my fascia. And so right now I am just almost there. I need a little, just a touch. There, okay? I need you to rotate your top corner there because we want to go perfectly flush. So what I'm going to do, because I like this position and we can rotate on it, done, okay? Now you got to make that perfect. Okay, that's good. Okay. I'm liking it. Just a hair shy on the three quarters on that one. Right. Now, the other thing I need you to look at, I need you to get over there and see what that looks like on that rafter. Okay, we're, uh, we're half on. You're good? Yep. All right. Well, let's go for it. All right, there's no going back now. Hmm. Before you go any further though, I'm gonna go confirm that from my end. Because if we get this wrong, then the whole roof is wrong, right? <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah, that's gonna work out great. Okay. Uh, my stud is just to the right of the black. Okay. There as well, there as well. And yes and yes, they're all just to the right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead. So this is what we call laminating, right? We hold things flush, we nail them together.
transferring the load one roof into one piece of wood through the nails into the next piece of wood that is actually structured. This works perfect every time. All right, now you can go through the, the face of this one. So I know this is not a traditional way to sheet. We're not staggering joints and any of that kind of business. We're just trying to keep things, the cost benefit analysis really. It's a 16 foot wide roof, two sheet goods of 16 feet. I kind of figured there's a good chance you're gonna to have to double laminate the middle anywhere where the joint is. It happened to us, we got our measurement out a little bit. Just trying to design this system for homeowners so that you guys can be successful. That's why we're going with the 5 8 instead of the 7 16 OSB. The tongue and groove is a nice feature. It might give you a little more support, but the thickness of this, okay, is better than any roofing system out there. So it's worth to spend the extra couple bucks. Now, uh, as far as the gap across the top, we're not gonna just rely on our shingle. I'm actually gonna use a joist tape like we would use on building decks to get a waterproof seal. I do have a membrane to put on the roof so we can make sure that all the gaps and cracks are gonna be water repellent. And then of course, we're gonna go with architectural shingle. So at the end of the day, what we're building here may not be uh, up to the current standard. It's actually beyond. <laughs> Even if it's a little sloppy, stupid, and DIY, it's gonna be a better roof than you're gonna find in a brand new house. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> All right, double check here, 17 and a half. All right, Matt, uh, from the tongue? Yeah. Go 17 and three quarters, please. Thank you, sir. No wind. It's not gonna pull you off the roof carrying the sheet goods. I mean, just everything is going perfect here. Am I okay? It's time to uh, get the waterproofing membrane out, get our next layers on. We're gonna go through the whole assembly about our process for skinning this thing and getting it watertight. Uh, remember, we're four season climate up here, so we have to deal with not just rain, but the risk of, well, some ice buildup. We can get a weird weather scenario here where we can get a lot of freeze and thaw. And water likes to work its way under the shingles. So we've got to make sure we got a nice little membrane on here. Make sure that whenever the ice is melting, we're diverting it out and around or even up under the shingles, but anything to keep it from going underneath the plywood. 